Fire Emblem Engage is so close to launch and we're getting some early hype in Fire Emblem Heroes thanks to our first Engage banner. As promised, today we'll be doing a proper breakdown since we have all the information about our new characters. Joining Fima Alir, we have the three characters from Firinae, the First Kingdom we'll be visiting in Engage, Alfred the Crown Prince, Sailing the Younger Princess, and Chloe, one of Sailing's retainers. We'll talk about everyone's stats and skills plus discuss during place down builds. Before we jump into the banner, we do have a free unit via quest, and that is Etie. She will probably demo after this banner is over, but currently there is no 4 star focus. While the initial engage cross promotion in Faye is pretty pathetic, we are getting more with celebration quests. You can get two 5 star copies of Etie, one for logging in, one for doing super easy quests. Along with Etie, you can get five extra first summon tickets, along with a bunch of the usual materials. If you check out the Aether Resort, they added 12 new tracks from Engage. They are 12 arrangement songs from the games of the 12 emblems. It's more of a relaxed remix because I do know there are more upbeat versions as well. To obtain the 12 tracks, they cost 40 RNR Infinity, and you can get a whole bunch from doing the new 12 special maps for Engage. Sadly, I don't think these maps grind any orbs, just the resource to buy the remix tracks, or just spend them however you want. With 5 tickets via quests, 4 tickets from forging bonds, and 1 free summon, you have 10 free first summon opportunities. This banner features 2 sparks, so if you just full summon with the tickets, you can save quite a lot of orbs. It's great if you're going for the second spark as well. Otherwise, good luck with your 10 summons. Let's talk about Etia first, because she ain't no ordinary instant demo. Etia is one of Alfred's retainers, and along with Boucheron, these guys have some sort of training club going on. In Faye, she'll be a colorless infantry archer. Etia will prove her muscles aren't just for show by having 40 HP, 45 attack, 40 speed, 30 defense, and 28 res. Speed Super Boon is impressive, but 45 base attack sets a new record for archers. She will come in second when we adjust for dragon flowers, but regardless, this is incredible on a demoted unit, and she has 40 speed as well. A lot of the higher attack archers do not have 40 plus speed, so Etie is going to be a great offensive unit. In terms of old skills, not much to write home about. She has Draconic R for her monster base attack, Attack and Defense Ideal 3 can work with her weapon, and Attack and Defense Gap buffs an ally. Guess what? If Alfred's on your team, it will 100% be going to him. For her weapon, Ete has the Protection Bow plus 12 Might, and if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grant plus 5 attack and defense and inflict guard on the foe. Technically, this is a new weapon, however, the end result is the same as Winter Felix's Reindeer Bow plus. Protection Bow is better because it has a 3 space range versus 2. If you play defensively, this doesn't make a difference, however, the extra range could let an archer extend farther away to fight someone. Perhaps it could be useful on a bow cavalier, but generally just decent on any attacker. In terms of placedown builds, Etia is another great colorless bow infantry demo. No one really comes close to 45 base attack, and 40 speed is still very high as well. Compared to Kiragi, who was a recent fellow demo, Etia specializes in attack with decent speed and some res. Kiragi is faster and has higher defense while trading res. They are different enough to specialize in separate areas, but both are pretty fast compared to their fellow archers. They will both be fun merge projects if you can get them. For Etia's base kit, they're boosting her attack and defense with protection bow and attack and defense ideal. That is fine, but Etia does not have a status to keep ideal active, so you're going to want something like an oath or rouse buff for multiple fights. With the extra defense, you could try to initiate to tank a hit and you have guard via protection bow. You can use no follow up to double consistently, and what if I told you our grand hero battle unit has no follow up as a B skill? Hmm. Of course, the sacred seal version is fine too, but that can be used for a stat booster or heavy blade for cooldown. If you want a player phase build with more protection, Remote Sparrow is new and grants 30% damage reduction. You could use Low Spin in Defense or Seal Defense 4 in the B slot. More defense debuffs on top of Etie's base attack is scary, and it's also good for Dead Eye damage too. If you can get consistent cooldown method, then Finish 4 skills are great, plus they also have a 3 space activation range. It would be nice if the Arcane Bow comes with expected specials, but we still need to wait on that one. While we wait, you can go for some other offensive inheritable bows like the White Cap Bow. Etia is definitely a potential user. Brave attacks naturally suit high base attack, and she has decent enough speed too. She will easily meet the speed check into slow tanks, and combining that with things like low or seal defense 4 is gonna hurt a ton. Another option is Kiragi's Unbound Bow Plus. It's a solo weapon with low speed and defense. Great for solo builds and very customizable. For any of these skills, if you feel like Etia has enough attack, you could choose variants that focus on speed and defense or res. Very workable stat spread, and she could use some of the more uncommon stat variants like speed and defense or speed and res. 
Overall, Ete may not be on the banner, but she's a fantastic new demote archer, at least I assume she would demote. If you like using her in Engage, then watch out for future extra copies. Let's now talk about the actual banner units, starting with Chloe. She's our early game Pegasus Knight, and honestly, I'm not really sure if there's a reason for anyone else to reclass into a basic Pegasus Knight over the promoted Griffin or Wyvern Knights. I guess we'll find out soon. In Fae, Chloe will be a Lance Flyer and have 36 HP, 38 attack, 40 speed, 28 defense, and 42 res. She has a res super boon, and you might want that, as Chloe will play around flat stats quite a bit. Highest res lands fire in the game, and Chloe is going for pure Pegasus Knight stat spread, very low HP, kinda low defense, and then higher speed in res. I feel like she could have sacrificed more defense for extra speed, but it's okay. For old skills, you got Glimmer and a surprising distance dance, distant counter with plus 5 res. Even if you don't need Chloe, that is a prime fodder skill. For her weapon, the Dreaming Spear, it has 16 might and exercise specials, it also grants a flat plus 5 tall stats, meaning on the field, Chloe just has perma bonus stats. This replaces the usual in combat stat boost, and it doesn't actually affect Dreaming Spear's other effects. It will be important for Chloe's B skill though. Main focus is her speed and res stats. Now for the other portion of the weapon, Chloe needs a team with two allies in a support pairing. If you do not have this, the weapon does not function. If you do, then Chloe gets a free fob attack, she inflicts guard on the foe, she deals true damage equal to 20% of her res stat, and reduces damage by the same amount, excluding AoE specials. Chloe is very much a res version of Spring Maria, she gets res scaling true damage and flat damage reduction, fantastic perks, and it does make up for her lower attack and defense while making her even tougher to KO with magic. Dreaming Spear is a fun weapon, and as long as you got the right units on your team. Let's not talk about Pegasus Flight 4. It's easier to use and has some new effects. Always active, it inflicts minus 4 attack and defense on the foe during combat. At start of combat, if unit's speed is higher than the foe's speed, minus 10, then inflict attack and defense debuffs equal to 80% of the difference between res stats before combat, max of minus 8 attack and defense. Additionally, if at start of combat, unit's speed plus res total is higher than the foe's speed plus res total, then prevent a follow-up attack. I'm a bit impressed with this tier 4 upgrade. Pegasus Flight 3 was super rare and then they put it on a demote this past year. Not a lot of candidates can use it, but if you have one, then this tier 4 version is quite nice. The speed check is even easier now. You got a 10 speed advantage instead of 7. The res check only needs a 10 res difference to max out, and it's bumped up to minus 8 total debuffs. You then have constant attack and defense debuffs at all times, and there's a new speed plus res stat comparison. If you win that one, then you get a fall up denial. This is why Chloe's Dreaming Spear grants flat stats. It's trying to play around Pegasus Flight 4. The foe needs more than 55 speed on the field to not activate the skill, and then they need 37 or more flat res to not get hit by minus 12 attack and defense. If Chloe gets the fault denial, then combined with her spear, she has Omni Breaker. As long as you have a support pair on the field, her weapon is always active, and then you just need to stack res for more true damage and damage reduction. Keep in mind, Pegasus Flight stat checks require out of combat flat stats, including buffs or debuffs, but Dreaming Spear's red scaling effects can use in combat boosts. Distance Stance adds plus 5, and you have the C slot and Secret Soul slot for more. It does not exist yet, but Speed and Res Oath 4 would be Chloe's best option instead of the usual rain skill. We need the flat buffs to both stats, and in combat, you get extra stats when near allies. For the moment, you can go with the tier 3, but the tier 4 is just so much better. If you want more flat stats, you can go with Fury as a Sacred Seal. Recoil damage is not ideal, however, if you use Chloe with her Liege, Saline, then she does cancel out the recoil. With this base kit, Chloe is going to be a monster res tank with DC capabilities against mages. She'll have Omni Breaker and Guard, which is solid. She can fight physical damage foes with Pegasus Flight's debuffs and Dreaming Spear's flat damage reduction, but you probably still want to avoid arrows. Regarding other skills, Chloe just want more of all stats, which means you kind of need to choose. Res is a big focus for Dreaming Spear, and if you keep Pegasus Flight, you need flat speed and res. You get some leeway for the speed part, but it's still iffy if you ignore it completely. If you want an offensive build, you can build more attack and speed with things like Near Trace for Kanto. Chloe has guard and a follow-up attack with decent speed, so you may not need flow guard to attack scarier targets. You could go for Dive Bomb or Desperation for more aggressive builds, and Surge Sparrow at least grants some healing. In general, Chloe is on the more unique side as far as units go. She will have some deceptive bulk if Pegasus Fight 4 
fully activates, and since she also has the flat damage reduction. At 50 res in combat, she already reduces 10 damage. She could have a role on a flyer team if you need to fight some scarier mages. Just remember to bring a support pair, otherwise she is much weaker. Next up we have Sailing, who is actually quite an interesting unit in Fae. In Engage, Sailing gets a pretty unique class having access to swords and magic, but she's going full mage here and will be a green infantry mage. For stats we got 37 HP, 41 attack, 44 speed, 17 defense, and 38 res. She would have an attack super boom. Rather respectable offensive stats, and Sailing will be another mage who dumps defense. Her res isn't as crazy as Kadean Sorens, but Sailing has some answers to the common woes of this mage archetype. For old skills, we got Iceberg, which is still gonna hurt. Sailing then gives Kanto Control into the permanent pool. If you keep Kanto Control on Sailing, she could be a very annoying support unit. The main reason is due to her Joyous Tome. It has 14 Might and Exoite Specials. Every turn, Sailing heals 7 HP for herself and allies within 3 spaces. She also heals allies 7 HP after they fight in their combat if they're within 3 spaces. Keep this effect in mind. Now for Selene herself, she gets percent damage reduction equal to the number of allies within 3 spaces that have more than half health times 15, max of 45% DR, Selene can also get plus 5 tall stats, true damage equal to the number of healthy allies within 3 spaces times 5, and she heals 7 HP after fighting as well. The true damage maxes out at plus 15. Basically, Sailing passively heals every turn and then heals after combat for everyone within 3 spaces. To max out her damage reduction and true damage you need 3 allies within 3 spaces. They also need more than 50% HP, hence all the healing going on. I wouldn't call Sailing a super defensive mage, but she will be annoying to take down without DR piercing. Failing to KO her means she heals after combat and then heals the next turn as well. Sailing has good speed and a lot of damage to counterattack back with too. To accompany her kit, Sailing introduces Speed and Res Ideal 4 to the game. Like other ideal skills, you get plus 7 Speed and Res if you are at full HP or you have an active bonus. If you have both, you get another plus 2 for a total of plus 9. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the last ideal variant to complete the set, and there's no tier 3 available to inherit first. That means you gotta choose between Ideal 4 or Kanto Control. In regards to ideal skills, personally I feel like the finished 4 skills are overall better. You still hit plus 7 to 2 stats, just for being within 3 spaces of any ally. That's enough room to extend for attacks, and basically guaranteed for defensive builds. You then get 5 extra true damage and 7 healing on hit if you're ready your special. For sailing specifically, finish 4 just seems to fit better as you can now get 20 true damage hits, and more healing, this time it's on hit. At the very least, Joyous Tome can heal Sailing back to full, which is the most common reason Ideal 4 skills don't really activate after one fight. She does need a bonus though, so bring support or use things like Oath 4 or Smoke 4 skills to get their status effects. I mainly wanted to mention Speed and Res finish for Sailing because Kadein Byleth has the tier 3. He also has low speed and res, which Sailing can use as well, so honestly, might be worth grabbing him for fodder. To ensure Sailing gets to use her 15 true damage twice, try to get no follow up in some way. You could also go for a special heavy build with Times Pulse since Joy's Tome excites specials. That will work with finish 4 skills, and then if you want to pierce damage reduction, you need special Spiral 4. Speaking of damage reduction, if you want to go full offense, Sailing could use Remote Sparrow instead of trying to boost her defense with things like Sturdy Impact. Honestly, a speed and defense variant of Remote Sparrow could be good too. With her max 45% DR, that's 62% DR, which isn't insane, but hey, when you start with 17 base defense, we'll take it. Alright, now while Salient has damage reduction and true damage for combat, let's discuss her support power and how she might end up being a very annoying unit. First off, 7 HP healing every turn, 7 HP healing after combat for allies. Wow, that sounds super annoying on save skill army units. Louis better come with a save skill when he gets in. Same idea can apply to Bulwark Infantry Tanks, they heal 14 HP after combat and they'll heal on the next turn. Even if your ally can't get the kill, Sailing then has Kanto Control to lock down mobile targets. If we still have the B slot open, you can add in a Sabotage debuff or go for the Rally Plus Ruse combo. Now that if we add Valentine's Robin into this mix, you can get healing effects on hit, and you could also do something like a double Sailing team. The Heron Dancers work as well. I feel like healing has been getting more and more out of hand, maybe time to start looking for Fatal Smoke fodder. Most people were curious if Engage Banners were going to continue the rearmed slash arcane trend since they're brand new characters and the arcane weapons have seemingly been softly tied to an evil theme, 
My idea for how they could do rearmed engaged characters was by having units engage with an emblem since their entire mechanic involves sharing skills and weapons with the user. Well, no need for that because Alfred is just straight up a rearmed hero. Definitely the biggest surprise we got. If you've seen engaged stuff, Alfred has been featured a lot and that applies to all the four main older royals. They're on the cover art, they're in the opening, and just in general they're prominently shown. Alfred joins up with Alir very early, so I'm surprised they're making him even more limited in Fae. He got some fun tools to compensate though. Alfred is a Lance Cavalier, and for stats he has 40 HP, 45 attack, 25 speed, 43 defense, and 27 res. He has an attack super boon, and correct me if I'm wrong, but even with Dragon Flowers, Alfred outright has the highest attack and defense for any Cavalier. If not, he's at least tied for first. Kind of insane, but it only gets crazier. He will not have the best speed, and magic damage will be his downfall. A lot of Lance Cavaliers tend to fall in this category. For old skills, he has Bonfire and Crossbow Attack. Pretty rare C skill and fun for buffing allies from afar. It does not help Alfred though if you want to replace it. Alfred will bring the long-awaited Arcane Chiang Lance. I assume Chiang is Chinese, and I have zero clue how that relates to Alfred or Firenay since Firenay seems to have a French naming theme. The closest I got is that Engage has Chi Adept units, but that's about it. Now, the Arcane Chiang is going to be a very good weapon for basically anyone, except for specials and that sort of combat. If you have more than 25% HP, you get plus 5 to all stats, a free follow-up attack, you deny the enemy follow-up, and if the user or foe initiates after moving to a new space, then you get breath type cooldown reduction. Good lord. While I would say the Arcane Downfall Axe is a bit more tailored to certain unit types, the Arcane Chiang Lance is like Leaf's Arcane Sword or the Arcane Dragonstone, Excite Specials, good for everyone, plus 5 dollar stats, good for everyone, free follow-up attack, good for fast or slow units, follow-up denial, never hurts, and then Breath type cooldown is just fantastic. It is especially strong on Cavaliers and Flyers because their cooldown options are limited to basically just Heavy Blade. By having a sword specials at the same time, Arcane Chiang is now best in slot for so many units. Even if no follow-up is everywhere, the cooldown reduction is still very useful. Let's now talk about other use cases real quick. First up, arm units. This thing is prime hardy fighter material. You can run Pavis or Aegis, recharge them on the counter, and you can combine defensive no follow-up with a follow-up denial. Same idea for godlike reflexes on infantry, plus you can combine the cooldown reduction with temple skills or finish for A skills. For Cavaliers and Flyers, pretty good Gale Force stick, and you can ready Aether in two actions as well. You can charge Bonfire or Icebreak in one hit, and for faster users, you can use Arcane Chiang as a substitute for Offense and a Fallup for Flow skills. That lets you run Near Trace Kanto instead, but you won't actually have to choose with Alfred's other new skill. Feel free to share any other ideas for the Arcane Chiang Lance if you have a build in mind. Personally, I've been completely lost in the hype, and I forgot I can slap this thing on my Ephraim. Sadly, despite having two inheritable weapons to play with, I think this inheritable weapon is just better than the two Sigmunds since A, I love playing with speed builds, and B, I often run Distant Counter. The Sigmunds offer no speed, and the follow-up and breath type cooldown is replicated without needing to be solo. That makes DC easier to use. I was actually planning on giving my old ton of the Arcane Lance, whatever it may be, but maybe I'll try to get two if possible. Now, unlike the last couple rearmed heroes, Alfred gets a little special treatment. To separate him from the Arcane Lance users, he has self improver as his A skill. It grants a flat plus 10 attack, plus 5 speed, and plus 20 defense. It then inflicts a flat minus 5 res. If Alfred has more than 25% HP, he also inflicts guard on the foe. Jesus Christ, you're telling me one of the highest attack and defense units in the game gets 10 extra attack and 20 defense for minus 5 res. 71 attack, 63 defense on the field. While these are some impressive numbers, outside of stat checking, before combat, or AoE specials, it really does not matter how the unit gets the stats when calculating in combat outcomes. For example, Flamelin's A skill grants plus 12 to all stats fairly easily, that's 48 total extra stats. Alpha gets a positive total of 35 stats, and then you get the minus 5 res, it's a total of 30. Self-improver is hilarious and good because it's always active, but Alfred definitely gets hit by any attack or, or defense chills. As an A skill, you're also locked out of some fun things like Distant Counter. Now, for his new inheritable skill, Alfred brings Flow Near Trace 3, enables Kanto remaining plus 1. If unit initiates combat, neutralize effects that prevent follow-up attacks, aka offensive no follow-up. Flow near trace basically becomes the automatic best near trace if you want to double and you don't have offense enough follow up already. 
Minus three debuffs to two stats is nice, but for a pure player phase damage output, you need that follow-up guarantee. Normally, a free follow-up can simulate offense no follow-up if you're faster, but having the real thing is just better. Alfred showcases this with the Arcane Cheon. If the foe is faster and has a follow-up denial, this combo still lets the slower unit double. It only fails into defense and no follow-up. Not that no follow-up in general isn't uncommon, but it basically is just a check. What about faster units? Technically, it still helps. If the foe has follow-up denial and defense on a follow-up like a dual Duma, you need to win a speed check, but you only get to do the speed check if you have offense and a follow-up. You cannot brute force it with the follow-up alone from the Arcane Cheon. Basically, if you're inheriting the Arcane Lance to a Cavalier or Flyer, please take Flow near Trace at the same time. Alfred is coming in with a pretty basic game plan, avoid magic damage at any cost. He wants to fight other physical damage foes and basically has Omni Breaker plus Special Fighter thanks to Self Improver. You do need to move to get the cooldown reduction but that's not a huge issue and Flow Near Trace provides Kanto to move again. With Bonfire, Alfred can charge it in one single action meaning he can counter back with a 30 damage plus special or you can take another action to a charge Ignis, Aether or Gale Force. For skills, you can replace crossbow attack with a combat skill if you want, tag even menace to make things even worse for nearby foes, or go with fatal smoke if healing becomes an issue. Alfred can be stopped by no follow-up effects, so if you need a round 2, then stopping healing would be nice. Pulse smoke or panic smoke 4 works as well. While Alfred's speed isn't crazy, it does help prevent doubles on the enemy phase. A lot of arcane weapons have follow-ups or in slower units won't be able to double through Alfred's Omni Breaker. For B skills, I wouldn't replace Flow Near Trace, but low attack and defense or a stat near Trace can be used. Thanks to Guard from Self Improver, Alfred won't get instant bonfired himself, which is good. For Sacred Seals, you can go with the Catch or Solo variants. I wouldn't run Rouse in the seal slot normally, but just for the memes to see bigger on field stats, I think this is an exception. Overall, Rearmed Alfred is incredible fodder value and a fun unit himself. He'll die to anything magic, but physical damage units will need to chew through some serious defense fall of denial and guard. Alfred doesn't really have any answers to damage reduction nor does he get damage reduction but that applies to basically most Lance Cavaliers anyway. Our last unit is female Alir, our newest protagonist. I couldn't believe it but Lumera's lines in fight actually have her say Alir so that's the actual pronunciation. Now despite being the divine dragon Alir is a sword infantry unit. For stats, she has 40 HP, 43 attack, 46 speed, 32 defense, and 26 res. She also has attack and speed super boons, my lord. Just in base stats, Alira beats the next fastest sword unit by 3, which is kind of insane. And then with dragon flowers, she's still the fastest. Her attack is very high as well, but she is lowering her defensive stats to compensate. They are balanced at the very least. Alir is going full on Sonic with attack and speed ideal 4 and speed smoke 4. She also comes with Luna, but she's prime vital astral material. Liberation is an interesting sword, excites specials, and every turn if Alir has more than 25% health, she grants the charge status to herself and her support partner if they're within 3 spaces for one turn. Reminder, charge lets you move 3 spaces in cardinal directions and it counts as warp movement. Now, at start of combat, if Alir has more than 25% health, she gets plus 5 dodge stats, inflects speed and defense debuffs on the foe, and she has 40% dodge damage reduction. The speed and defense debuffs are equal to the number of allies from distinct titles within 3 spaces of unit times 4, max of minus 12 debuffs with 2 nearby allies. I haven't summoned yet, so I can't test it out myself, but I'm not sure if distinct titles includes engage itself. You might be able to have one engage ally and then one ally from any other game. I'll update my pinned comment once I find out. What I do know is that Alira can give herself charge. Her support does not need to be on the field, she just needs to be healthy. Charge is a fun status though, and Alira can give anyone charge if she supports them. I think you could see some very fun high mobility combos. For Alir herself, she can get the standard Exoid Specials, plus 5 to all stats, and dodge. Her speed and defense debuffs are quite large though, minus 12 speed and defense is noticeable and these only increase further. Alir will bring close call forwards to the game, tier 4 dodge skills, oh boy. The skill now inflicts always minus 4 speed and defense on the foe, it has a built in phantom speed effect that gives you 7 extra speed for speed checks. Dodge damage reduction is bumped up to 50% and if you initiate combat, unit moves one space backwards after combat. That last part is just the hit and run portion of close call. 
So tier 4 dodge skills basically just cut an 11 speed advantage over than before. Reminder, Phantom Speed is not real speed, but if you really need to outspeed a foe to max out dodge, then it really helps. The constant debuffs are nice, and then Hit and Run actually seems quite good with a Liberation's 3 move charge. Decent Hit and Run tactics with extended range. Relatively speaking, Alir is kind of simple in that they just have a crap ton of speed and defense debuffs and dodge effects. If Liberation has two allies from distinct titles combined with Close Call 4, that's minus 16 de uh, speed and defense, plus you have the plus 5 general stat boost. With Liberation's 40% DR and Close Call's 50% DR, Alir can get 70% damage reduction if she outspeeds by 10 or more. After combat, Speed Smoke 4 kicks in for more buffs and debuffs and another stacking 40% dodge. On the next enemy phase, Alir will have 82% DR, good lord. If you do not pierce damage reduction, she is going to be very annoying. She also hits decently hard as well. Now there are some upgrades we can make for sure. Vital Astra just for the damage portion since it scales off of speed. If you use Times Pulse, you can get the 30% dodge active while Close Call and Liberation are still going. It's only 79% DR and it's active for player phase as well. You will lose Speed Smoke speed advantages, but Vital Astra spam is just way too fun. To get some health back while DR tanking, you can use Attack and Speed Finish 4. We discussed Ideal 4 versus Finish 4 already, and if you go the Vital Ash Times Pulse route, then Finish 4 seems way more enticing. However, keep in mind, Liberation needs allies within 3 spaces, and same goes for Finish 4. Funny enough, charging too far ahead can be bad for Alir, so that's something you gotta keep in mind. For some other skills, Alir wants no follow up in some way. Sacred Seal version is fine. You could go Flashing Blade and Gale Force to use Charge's extra movement. Special Spiral 4 can pierce enemy DR, and Attack and Speed Menace is another speed advantage method. You could do the Distant Dart route, but in general, Alir is very susceptible to DR piercing effects. She basically will go down easily if Deadeye goes off. Overall, Absolutely crazy offensive stat spread and can be very annoying if her damage reduction is not dealt with. Liberation giving charge to anyone if they're Alir's support can be quite good as well. Alir herself just needs to be careful running too far ahead. Seems like our latest Fire Emblem protagonist is another speed demon swordmaster. One can only wonder what engaged form Alir will be like in Fae. For those not summoning, what if I told you you could have a free to play version of Alir? Well, that's what Alir's mother, Queen Lumera, kind of is. Lumera will be our next Grand Hero Battle Unit, and Engage is starting off insanely strong for Heroic Grail Units. Lumera is an amazing unit, but if you want to merge her up, you're gonna have to sacrifice a very good skill. She might not be around long in Engage, but you'll probably see her around in Fae for quite a while. We'll talk about Lumera next, and good luck summoning on the first of many Engage banners. I would say the opening three houses banners were quite tame, save maybe Byleth. However, whether it's power creep three years later or whatever, Engage is blazing out of the starting gates. We have two great free units as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.